Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Inside Guns with your host, me, the Yankee Marshall. Today, I want to talk about something that always kind of bothers me a little bit, and it's probably going to make some people angry, but it's something I feel like I have to say. I want to talk about all these times people always write these letters and sign these petitions to politicians and think they're actually making a difference. Now, I know you get told all the time by gun channels and by gun groups that, hey, go over and sign this petition or go over and use this form to fill out a letter to your politician and let them know what we think about this subject because we got to let them know. Well, it's all kind of bunk. Uh, it is a great way to get you over there and say, hey, while you're over there, won't you sign up for a monthly membership or buy some merchandise or something like that? That's good for that kind of thing. But as far as actually making a difference or letting politicians know anything, I hate to say it, after speaking to a lot of politicians in my day, I do that all the time, uh, not so much in the last year, unfortunately, but I've spoken to state representatives, uh, state senators, you know, people uh, in Washington, D.C., people on local levels, and the message that I get from them is all pretty much the same. Those things don't really do anything. They don't mean anything. They don't teach them anything. Now, back in the old days when politicians only knew what was going on in their districts or in their state even, was, uh, was to go talk to them or to receive correspondence from them, those days are gone. That might have meant something back then. But nowadays, politicians are in the know. And one of the things they know is how the internet works. They know how a very driven minority of people can make themselves seem like a lot of people with these form letters and petitions, etc., and they know some days they might get tons of emails that make it look like, oh my God, people are overwhelmingly against this thing I'm uh, supporting. But they know different. They know, oh, must have gotten posted on some right-wing blog or left-wing blog today. And we're hearing from the, the extreme of this organization or that organization or people who follow this group or that group. They're aware of those things because they understand the internet and they pay big companies millions, if not billions of dollars to tell them exactly who their base is, where they're located, and how many of them there are. They know these things. It's a science these days. So when they get a flood of emails or something, it doesn't really mean anything to them. It just means, well, somebody posted something on this website or that website today. The petitions don't mean much to them. They don't even check the signatures on those things. Every single one of them I've spoken to says, you know, doesn't mean anything. In fact, the vast majority of them say, especially at the federal level, say, I never even see them. They don't come to me. They go to like a sub office of my office and the aides uh, that are there take care of it. You know, they have form letters they cut and paste if they respond to someone or print out and respond to someone and they respond for me. If they even bother to respond, usually they don't. But they never even see the mail. Now, occasionally, one of their aides or one of the people they pay those millions of dollars to let them know everything will come in and say, okay, this is what we told you. These are the stances you've taken. This is what we told you you should expect as far as pushback or support. And the numbers we're getting pretty much go along with what we already told you. Because we know that uh, these mass emails and these petitions, they're spurred on by minority groups of people who sometimes sign 10, 20 times, send 10, 20 letters uh, because they get very motivated and it's very easy to sit at a computer and send this stuff out. And if you're angry about something, you're a hundred times more likely to actually say something than you are if you're happy. So if most people are not saying anything, we're going to assume they're happy. And if all the negativity is coming from this form letter from this gun group or that form letter from this forum or that petition from this gun group, then that's what we expected and we're not worried about it. It really doesn't do anything. Uh, what does do something is you showing up. Like when there's an event outside their offices at the Capitol, and they look out there and they're like, oh, look, there's 120 people gathered around some nut jobs talking about Jesus and burying their stuff in the yard. Uh, that doesn't scare them, uh, let me tell you. Uh, looking out there and seeing like 5,000 people, that'd scare them a little bit. And there's where the problem comes in. Uh, you know, I wouldn't care about this, these petitions and stuff. Because people always ask me, why aren't you doing it? You're falling down on the job. I'm like, no, I'm not, because they don't do anything. Me showing up in their office and speaking to them means way more than a petition with 10,000 signatures on it. Because they know any rube can do that on the internet. 
Some people will actually take the time to drive up and talk to them. And even I'm not going to change their mind. They know their numbers. They know I'm not representing the majority when I come in there. They know I'm representing me and people who think like me. They've got these numbers down. Like I say, it's a big industry, them having these numbers nowadays. That's why they don't worry about pissing off some people and not others. And that's why some people right now, some people that just despise Trump are still supporting him because they know who's out there. No matter how many people say things about Trump that are bad or say no one could possibly like Trump or send letters and go, I can't believe you're supporting Trump, which I'm sure they get tons of. They know what their base is actually thinking, how many of those people there are and where they're at. And they don't want to piss them off. They don't care about the people sending them the negative stuff because they have the real numbers. And like I said, I wouldn't really care about this stuff, but it makes so many people think, well, I did my part. I sat at my computer and filled out a form or sent out 10 letters or uh, signed on 10 different names onto a, a petition. No, it means nothing. Very little. Let's just say very little. If you really want to do something, show up in person for something. Schedule an appointment to go speak to your local representative in your state congress. Do things like that. That matters way more. Uh, I mean, I'm not slamming people for doing the petitions and doing the email campaigns, but they are next to meaningless. Politicians have got this stuff figured out. Like I said, they know who they're catering to. Or they know who their opposition is already. These letters don't change that for them. Uh, it'd be a big surprise to them if they didn't come. <laughs> that would be probably bad. So, I mean, go ahead and do them. But realize you haven't done much if that's all you do. Show up. Be there. Be present. Go speak to them yourself. And I know everyone can't do that. So if you know someone who's a gun channel that does do that, not just someone who sets up a, a you know a defense league and now give us lots of money and we'll use a third of it to fight battles. Uh, not that stuff. People that you know, on a personal level, even if it's someone doesn't have a YouTube channel, but your neighbor, you know, he's very involved in politics. He goes up to the Capitol twice a month, talks to politicians, say, hey, you know what? I want to chip in on your gas. I want to pay your gas money for going up there when I can't do it because I either have a job that doesn't allow me to or I'm disabled or whatever. Uh, that's all I kind of want to tell people. Put your money where it's going to work. Do things that are going to work. Go ahead and do the petitions and stuff if you want, but don't be fooled into think they mean anything to politicians because they don't. Like I said, they know the numbers. They know what happens. They understand the internet. They know what amplified rage looks like. So if you want to do something, go ahead and do those things to, uh, if you want, but also choose to do something better. Choose to show up or support someone that does because that means a whole lot more in the long run. And like I said, right now, we need to fight smart and we need to fight hard. Uh, we don't really have any definite targets at the moment, but being visible, being heard in person and being seen on the lawn of the actual capitals, when they look out their windows, that means a lot more than any email you could ever send them. All right, everybody, I want to move on once again to what everyone knows is my favorite part of the show, gun talk. Yesterday, I showed you that I put my Langdon Tactical RDO slide on my Beretta 92XG full size, and it looked pretty good. I thought it looked uh, great. Good combination there. And I told you that today I'd come back and tell you what optic I was going to put on it. So let's go ahead and see. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started here. And first off, I want to say this is going to be a first for me because I have never bought one of these products, nor have I ever put them on a gun. And the product I'm going to be putting on this gun, the red dot I'm going to be putting on it, is a Hollow Sun HS507C. This is their X2 series uh, red dot here. I have never purchased the Hollow Sun product. I've heard great things about them. And uh, rumor has it, they make SIG sights for them and I've always had good luck with those. So I'm gonna put one of these on there, see how it looks and see later how it does. Motherfucker. Could they make this harder to get out of the little case? Uh, there, a little sleeve. All right, let's go ahead and open it up here and see what's inside. I hope there's a red dot sight in there. Uh, instructions, silica gel, a little microfiber cloth, and there we do, we have a red dot. And what is this over here? Uh, that looks like the tool for installing it and for uh, adjusting it. It's a nice little thing. 
and a couple of different sets of screws it looks like yeah different sets of screws here not sure which ones go for what here they've already got the loctite on them i always like it when the screws already have the loctite on them all right let's get the side out of here all right this one came with the little base that i'm not going to need which just slides right off of it there so here we have the actual site, the little hollow sun site. As you can see, it is the uh, solar powered one. It has a battery and it has the solar also. I don't know why it has the solar and a battery. I'm not sure. I don't know if it recharges the battery or if it just provides power for it in the daytime. I don't know. Uh, like I say, I'm not an expert on these things, but I'll figure it out eventually once I uh, break down and read the manual. But let's go ahead and get it on there, see how it looks. All right, looks like I'm just going to have to set it right down on there. It's already got the little foot pegs and everything, and it does seem to fit perfectly. It says it fits anything that an RMR fits, and that looks like it is true because it fits on there like it is made for it. Now just to figure out which size screw I need. I'd say the shorter ones. When you're unsure on screws, it's always better to use the shorter ones first and then go the longer ones if you have to, because if the shorter ones are too short, they just won't catch. If the longer ones are too long, you can actually damage things underneath and damage the actual threads for the screw trying to get it in there. I will say that putting the red dot on these RDOs really is simple. Did I jinx myself? No, I just can't get it to start threading. Hold on, I'm about to get it to start threading. Okay, a word to the wise here. There's a perfect example of why you never force screws because it appears the ones that come with the site do not fit the RDO slide. You have to use the ones that came with the RDO slide. And I would have probably known that if I'd have bothered to check first, but I am a do first, check later kind of person. All right, it's on there and it looks pretty good. I like the size of it. I like the shape of it. Uh, the only thing I really don't like about it is the hollow sun in big white letters and right here. Now on some of these uh, RMRs and other accessories, I've seen that you can just wipe this off, you know, kind of like you can on the night sight sometimes. Uh, sometimes it'll just come off with your fingernail. Sometimes you got to take a Q-tip with some solvent on it and uh, just rub it off there. So I am going to try to do that because I do not like the big white type on the side of it. But everything else about it, I seem to like. Now, one of the things that drew me to this is it's half the price of an RMR. That's one of the reasons I got was dr uh, drawn to it. The other is I really like the way it's set up because it has the two MOA dot surrounded by what I think is a, a 32 MOA circle around the dot. So it really gives you a more precise picture for when you want a precise picture and a more, you know, torso sized target to aim at when you want to do that. So really nice uh, way it's set up. I like that option there. I think you can change that, but I, I like it that way. So I'm going to leave it that way. And I will say one thing, I stuck this thing on. It's perfectly aligned with the sights. At about 25 yards, it's perfectly lined up. So that's always a good sign when that happens. <laughs> it can uh, uh, mean some good things. So now I'm just very anxious to get it out to the range and see if it performs as well as I'm hoping. Uh, I will have to say as far as the quality of it feels and, you know, uh, the weight of it, everything else feels every bit as good a quality as my RMR and my SIG sights, of course. So I've got high hopes for it. Just got to wait for some good weather and I got to wait for some of the snow to melt away because there's still about five feet of snow on my snow deck or around the area around my snow deck where it piled up in the little valley there area. Can't get down to it yet. As soon as I can, I'll get down there. I'll test this. We'll see how it does. And I'll let you all know. There you have it. All put together. Now all I got to do is wait for that glacier to melt that's between me and my shooting area down there. And I'll be able to get down and run some rounds through it. See how good it is. See if it holds up like the others. Might be a while before I put enough rounds through it to let you know how it did. But once I feel secure that it's a product I would buy again, or if it's something I would never buy again, I'll come back and I'll let you know. All right, everybody, I wanna end the show today as usual with our viewer EDC of the day. And it's a little different today because today our carrier of the day is coming to you from the Great White North. Can I get you a beer, a uh, back bacon? That's right, we got a genuine resident of Canada here today. Today we have Radical E. And Radicals carrying a gun you might not be familiar with here. I know I wasn't. It's the Czech Gun C2 Gladiator in 45 SCP, not ACP, SCP, which stands for Subcompact Percussion. That is a smooth board, black powder, double barreled Derringer. All right, after seeing this, I'm going to have to say two things here. One, 
I could have done without quite so much skin here. Uh, next time, t-shirt. Uh, although I will say you are very tan for somebody from Canada. I didn't know you all got that much sun up there. Very impressive. And two, I'm going to say, I've never seen this gun before or anything like it. Now you might say, well, why would anyone need a black powder smooth bore double barrel Derringer? Well, got to remember, like I said, it's Canada. They only allow you to defend yourself against moose and polar bears up there. So handguns is kind of a no-no, especially carrying one around. But carrying this around, being a black powder weapon, gets him around a lot of those archaic laws up there. Allows him to actually have something for personal defense, which he says he absolutely needs because he lives in werewolf country up there, uh, which I think is stupid. I hate when people say stuff like that. It makes us look like crazy people or just ignorant because werewolf country is everywhere. There's no specific werewolf country. In fact, I bet there's more werewolves down here in America right now than there is up there because uh, our mortgage interest rates, rates are so low right now. So I'm sure a lot of them are moving south for that. So everyone lives in werewolf uh, country. Don't think you're special. But I wanted to show this gun because, like I said, very unique. I've never seen one. It's very uh, clever, a clever way of getting around those archaic laws up there and actually being able to carry something for self-defense. Is it optimal? No. But is two shots of a 45 caliber gun better than nothing? Damn straight it is. So uh, I'm not even going to make fun of him here because, well, for one, I think uh, making fun of Canadians is like pushing, you know, handicapped people out of their wheelchair. So I'm not going to even make fun of him because, like I said, this is something I've never seen before. I think it's pretty ingenious. So there's our viewer EDC of the day, Radical E, with his double barrel, smooth bore, black powder, 45 caliber Derringer. All right, everybody, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you come back again tomorrow. Until then, I want to sign off as usual by saying, as far as the state of the world today is concerned, well, you know, it is what it is. But what it will be in the future, especially for those of us in the gun community, if we keep our heads about us, we ignore the profiteers and the fear mongers, and we fight strong and fight smart, what things will be in the future, especially for gun rights, is better.